Hello, this is Joe Neville, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a Docker IPv6 network. First of all, I'm going to show you how to enable v6 support within Docker, and then we're going to build a specific type of Docker network, that being a user-defined bridge network. Once that's up and running, and we verified that, I will assign containers to that, and those containers will be running IPv6, of course. And then I'm going to show you how you can build end-to-end -end connectivity from those containers to external networks. We'll have a word about the V6 routing so that you can access the containers from other areas of your network. Now I've written up all of this in a blog. Here it is and I've put all of the captures and the commands that I'm going to use and there's even diagrams to try to illustrate the point and some notes there. I will put a link in the description to this document. But that's enough of an introduction I think, let's get on with the build. I'm going to be running this tutorial on the latest version of Ubuntu Server 20.04. This is the release, it's dot three, so that's the long term release. And here's a look at the history that I've run already, so you can see I've run an update and I followed the instructions to install Docker for Linux, which are on docs.docker.com. And that's all I've done. So if we have a look at Docker Zero, here's a IP address show for Docker Zero, that being the default bridge interface that's created when you install Docker. As you can see, it is IPv4 only. That's using the default address of 172.17.0.1 slash 16. If we have a look at the networks, it will just be the default one. So we've got the bridge, host and the none there. And then to inspect the bridge, there you can see it actually has this key value pair of enable IPv6, that's false because this is the default. And then you can see you've just got the IPv4 against the config. So this is what we're going to change. Now, how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to create a JSON file and we put it here. So at this stage, and this is one of the things in the official documentation, it didn't say that this was a new file that you're creating. That's one of the reasons why I started this. So it, for this version of Linux, looking in the folder where this needs to be, the new JSON file needs to be saved, there's a JSON file called key.json, but we need a new one called daemon.json. So let's create that. Okay. And what we need to do is to create two key value pairs. I'm just going to copy this in. So the file, we need to have a key of IPv6 with a value of true and a key of fixed-CIDR-V6. And the value for that is going to be the V6 prefix that you want assigned to Docker 0. So in this case, I've gone for 2001 DB8 ABC1 colon colon slash 64. Save and exit out of there. And then we run a system ctl restart docker because we need to restart docker for this new file to be applied okay or authenticate for that and now if we do a docker network inspect bridge so docker zero you'll see that we now have the enable ipv6 is now set to true for this bridge network and we have our prefix there. So we've still got the IPv4 turned on. It's essentially dual stack now. So we've got the 172.17.0.0 slash 16 plus the new IPv6 subnet. There we are. Now, if we create a new container and attach it to this Docker Zero bridge network, it will be dual stack. So I'll show you that. We'll go Docker run DI, I'll give it a name of, let's go for Alpine V6-1, and the image, I'll go for Alpine, just go latest, fine. Downloading the image, because it's the first time I've built a container with this image. As you can see, that's now up. So we've got Alpine V6-1. If we have a look at the network again, so that bridge network, you can see, okay, so we've looked at that part. Now we have the container here. You can see Alpine V6-1 
and it is dual stack. It's 172.17.0.2 plus, I'm not going to read out all of that. That's the thing about V6 addresses, but you can see it has an IP address within our slash 64. And if we have a look at the Docker Zero interface now, you can see that it has an IP address in the slash 64 as well. So it is colon colon one acting as the gateway for our V6 prefix. And our container will be able to ping that gateway as well. I'll just prove that. See, we can ping. And if we create a second container, so I'll call it Alpine V6 dash two. Let's have a look at the IP address of that. There we've got its dual stack. So if we copy that, I'll be able to ping from dash one to this new container. So I'll paste in the new containers IP address there. There we are. Okay, so we have connectivity between the containers and the gateway and between each other. But the thing is, these containers are on the Docker Zero bridge network, okay? And there's a but. Well, it's a really rather a big but. And I'm referring to docs.docker.com and it says here, use of the default bridge, so this Docker Zero network, the bridge itself is considered a legacy detail of Docker and is not recommended for production use. So this is all very good for a demo, but this is no good in the real world. We shouldn't be doing this in production. So let's move on to a better approach, which is using a user-defined bridge network. On to user-defined bridge networks then. Very high level, they look quite similar to the Docker Zero bridge network. The Docker host acts as the gateway. We assign containers to the network and they can speak to each other and the Docker host and if you've got the routing set up, which we'll talk about afterwards, they can speak to external networks. But in this case, to create them, we have to run a docker network create command. We have to define not only the prefix, but also the name. You know, it's user defined, of course. So we enter a name and the prefix when we're doing the build. But I should say that's just high level because there's obviously a difference between these user defined bridge networks versus the Docker Zero network. And that's why Docker issue that warning. But I'm afraid I don't know any more about that at this moment in time. I haven't done any further research and there's nothing obvious in the document. Let's get on with the build then. Here I am back on my Ubuntu machine and the command we need to enter to create our network is docker network create dash dash then the subnet. Remember it is in quotation marks so I'm going to go for that 2001 db8 colon one colon colon slash 64. Now enter the gateway. Again, in quotation marks, db8, one, colon, colon, one. Add the IPv6 flag, of course, and then the name of the bridge, so my net one. That's the command, let's run that. Excellent, now if we look at Docker network, what is it, ls, okay, there we are. So we've got my net one, a bridge network, inspect, my net one. Okay, so V6 is true, of course. Now it is dual stack. It's not V6 only. We're not adva <laughs> We're not as cool as that <laughs> at this stage. But here you can see you've got the subnet and you've got the gateway there. And if we have a look at the Docker host, I'll do an IP link on there. You'll see we've got this new interface here that's being created in addition to Docker Zero. It's down at the moment, there's no containers on there. So if I do an IP address show against that, as you can see, so this is the gateway interface. That's the V4 and that's our MyNet1 gateway address. Thus, that's the default gateway interface that's being created on our Docker host. Let's create a couple of containers then. So it's Docker run. Give it a name, we'll do three and four here. And in this case, we have to 
enter the network that we want to assign our container to. And we'll create Alpine, of course. This one will be four. Now let's have a look at our network. Spect my net one. Okay, and there you can see we've got the two containers. They're dual stacked and they've been given the next available IP addresses. Colon colon two and colon colon three. Let's check that connectivity then. So we'll do some pings. I'll pi a three and we will ping the gateway. There, okay, good. And we will ping its neighbor. Now, those IP addresses didn't line up with the names, did they? It's going to be three. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's four is actually three. That's a bit confusing, but there we are just for illustrative purposes. And finally, a word about the connectivity from external networks to our internal network here. And to illustrate that point, I've got my diagram. Here's what we've already set up. This is the Docker host acting as the gateway. We've got my dash net one with two containers attached. And then I've done this in the lab. I've added an external network and an external server. That's dual stack. So it's 10.150.99 slash 24. And it's 2001 DB8 EEEE -E -E slash 64. And the point is the external nodes, if you want to speak to the container, all other things being equal, if you're just doing IP connectivity, so you're not exposing a port, like I know a lot of people do. If we're, we're focusing just on the routing here. The external nodes will need to have a route to the internal network. So it says it here, the external server needs a route to the my-net1 prefix, and it needs it via something that it knows. And in this case, it needs it via the Docker host. So if we add a static route onto this server, hitting this Docker host, we'll be able to access the containers. Now, something that muddies the waters a little bit here, if you were doing the testing from the containers and you were to do a ping with IPv4, it would be successful by default. You can ping, so I set up my containers, and I'll show you this in a moment, from the containers out to an external network, all other things being equal, and you will get a response. But if you try that with v6, you won't. So what's going on here? Well, spoiler alert, it's because of NAT being used with v4. So I'll step you through. In the v4 world, if we were to do an ICMP echo request, sending it to our external server here. So if we were to send a ping from this container to 10.150.99.2, the container would send it to its default gateway, the Docker host, and that would perform NAT on the source address. So it rewrites the source address from this internal network to its own IP address, sends that onto the external server. The external server receives that, knows how to get back to the Docker host because it's on the same network, sends the traffic back. The Docker host performs NAT again and forwards it onto the container. So you get that end to end, which I'll show you in a moment. Now, if you try to do that with V6, it doesn't work. So the container sending an ICMP v6 echo request to an address on 2001 DB8 EEEE -E 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 slash 64. So the colon colon two, it will hit the Docker host gateway. The Docker host won't perform any NAT. It will just forward it on with the source address. So the external server does receive the traffic, but it doesn't know how to get back to this internal network. So your pings from containers will work with v4, but they won't work with v6. Obviously, this is of limited use because a lot of the time you're going to be trying to get from external networks into your containers. But I just thought it was something that's worth looking at. The nuances of Docker that might not appear obvious. I mean, I didn't see anything in the documentation that actually spells this out. But in the demo, I'll show you what's going on with some TCP dump off the server. So you'll be able to see the NAT that's happened on the received traffic. Okay, let's get on with the demo then. Here's my demo setup then. So I've got my Docker host up here and I've got my new external server here. So it's just an Ubuntu server. This could be anything that's running dual stack IP. These servers are connected via their ETH1 interface. If I show you that. There we are. So dual stack 10.150.99.1. 2001 db8 e e e e colon colon one and on the external server 
same networks but dot two. Okay, so what we'll do then is we'll ping from a container using IPv4 first, and this will work. So I'll clear that off, and on our external server, I'm going to run a TCP dump so you can see what's going on. So it's sudo TCP dump, the interface being if one, and I'm going to collect ICMP. All right, let's set that off. Now to enter the command to ping from one of my containers. So we'll do it from that Alpine, Alpine V6-3. I'll do a ping of five and it's going to be 10.150.99.2. Okay, fingers crossed, there we go. Okay, so we have end-to-end -end connectivity. And as you can see here, You've got the echo request coming in and then we've got the echo reply being sent from this server. But have a look at that source address. The source address is 10.150.99.1. Sound familiar? Well, that's our Docker host. That's not actually our container. If you recall the Docker container, let's have a look at that net network. So inspect uh, my dash one, right? The container that I've just pinged from, the V4 address is actually this one. So it's 172.18.0.2. But because of NAT, the Docker host was rewriting the source address to itself. And just to prove that, you know, really hammer that home, this server, that's just responded successfully to the container, it doesn't know how to get to the container's address. It doesn't know about that my-net1 network. So we'll do a ping to the container. See, you can't get to it. When dealing with IPv4, Docker by default is relying on NAT to provide that connectivity. Now let's do the same thing with v6. We'll go IPv6 for a count of five, and then 2001 db8. E, 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 colon colon two okay so it's the same server i'll set up a tcp dump for icmp v6 so it's just this icmp6 set that off and there you can see that the traffic's hitting the server you're getting the echo request but there's no response because we don't know how to get back from this node we don't know how to get back to that network how do we solve that then? Well, it's just by fixing the routing. You need to make sure that your external nodes have routing to that internal network. There's various ways of doing that. The way that I'm doing it is via NetPlan. You can add routes via NetPlan. I've already prepared this. I'm just going to remove these comment marks so that this becomes live. And as you can see, I've got a route to, that's my my-net one network address, there's my prefix, and it's going via my Docker host via this address that I do know about because this server is attached to this network. If I exit out of there, save that, yes, and we'll do uh, sudo netplan apply, yep, apply that, we'll run the v6 again, and we'll do the ping again, fingers crossed, there we go, we've got end-to-end -end connectivity you can see the echo requests coming in and the response the replies being sent and as you can see the source address is that of the container and we're sending back to the container so we can ping the container directly there we go Okay, so that was how to build a Docker IPv6 network. I showed you how to enable v6 support within Docker, which then adds a v6 network to the Docker Zero bridge, but Docker advises not to use that in production. So we set up a user-defined bridge network, and then we discuss some of the nuances about the v4 implementation versus the v6. All written up in this document, I'll put the link in the description, but that just leaves me to say, my name is Joe Neville. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.